It's a big day in the chateau today. Only two days to go until Christmas and so much still to do. Only two days to go until Christmas? Yes, and what have you done? Have you done the cooking? I made some bread. Oh, okay, actually, you've imp Christmas you improved on me. And which one is this? This is your walnut bread, isn't it? This is fig and walnut. I might have a little bit of that as toast. Yes. And good morning, Judy. Good morning. Hello. <laughs> this is what I need. The Christmas apron. Lancelot's in his Christmas jumper. We are ready for action. Yes, he can be uh, watching everything from his perch on the chaise lawn. He's totally taken that thing over. It's not a true start to the day until Marie's nuts are out. <laughs> Go! <laughs> can I just show everyone the size of everyone else's nuts? It's like a bit of a strange <laughs> phrase. Um, you will understand. That's the size of everyone else's nuts. No, no, no. Mm -hmm. I think you'll find it is. And that's the size of Marie's nuts. Nuts. Actually, I don't have any nuts in here. It's just protein powder and lint seeds. It's very disappointing, actually. Yes, well, it's safe. No one in the and house is going to pinch any of it. This spread. Oh, you've got one good little thing in there, yeah, then. Last time I bought this, I put it there. That was a mistake, so... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that was good. Ah, uh, you were the mistake. Okay, I'm putting this back in the cupboard. Nothing to see here. Oh, my cranberries. I do have cranberries. You're well. sure they're not my cranberries for today? No, no, that's my cranberries. You've got your own cranberries, the fresh ones. Right, well, I've got the Christmas apron on. I'm getting started. The thermomix is out. Nothing can stop me. I've come to the pantry to collect all the food that I need for today's cooking, starting with the smoked salmon, because I'm going to make a smoked salmon avocado terrine. I've got a pretty nice setup here. The cranberries for my cranberry sauce. I'll be making an artichoke dip, a duck liver pate, salmon and avocado terrine. And I'm going to be needing some fresh rosemary. And I think a little bit of time will be really nice for the pâté too. We have a strict division of labour for all of the Christmas cooking. I am in charge of anything blended. Seems weird, but it's because I'm using the Thermomix a lot. So I'm doing pâtés, soups, sauces, anything like that, that's me. My aunt is doing all of the meat, the turkey and all of the trimmings. Marie is doing all of the vegetables and Marie and my aunt are sharing canapés. So between us, everything will be prepared seamlessly and effortlessly. At least that's what I'm telling myself. Seamlessly and effortlessly. Good morning! You shouldn't look at the state of me. <laughs> Find the oysters. Oh, excellent! So we'll need to open them. I don't know which one we are in. But they come in a lovely little uh, box. Yes. And it's two dozen of them, which is... More than enough, because not everyone eats them This here. is for the trifle. Oh! <laughs> Because we are in a trifle this year. Are you cooking today? That I'm going to start with a chili yes. today, the biscuit and the... I'm in the kitchen pot. too today. I'm going to make a smoked salmon terrine for tomorrow night. Oh, wow. And I'm also making the duck liver pate today. Oh, wow. But I thought an artichoke dip as well, so I'll do that too. My goodness. I'm on fire today. Um, oh, scallops. Yes, because I'm Excellent. going to do scallop. Um, wrapped in bacon for oh. tomorrow night. I love Christmas. Have I ever mentioned that? I love Christmas. So do oh. I. <laughs> and it's a sharing. Oh, it's a sharing of it. I do like. No, it's a sharing, sharing that I don't like. Christmas. You're traumatised from the shopping. <laughs> it was a little bit heavy. Oh my gosh, Stephen. You mustn't leave the oysters in the fridge. Oh no. You have to stay in a cool place. And but not come, the fridge. And they come not not the fridge. And they come from Brittany. Mm. And they have to stay in situ like this until the photos in the pantry. Then and open them. Okay, but be careful. I'm always terrified when people are opening oysters. <laughs> what? That's not you. No, it wasn't. <laughs> I am going to get started. I have cognac, riesling, and port ready for cooking. That's uh, not for getting through the day. Tea, I think, is needed. Would you like a cup of tea? <gasps> chai. Oh, chai. <laughs> I left the chai out for you. <laughs> Just putting the duck livers in water. They're going to soak in salted water for half an hour. Tatiana, I'm going to line my terrine for the salmon terrine, but the good news is I think there's going to be some smoked salmon left over for lunch, which will have to be eaten. We can't have waste. Absolutely not. <laughs> no, not at all. Never waste food. Yes, Lancelot is in full agreement. 
I was just getting the bottle opener for the Riesling for the pate and look what I saw. Maria has stuck her face inside the kitchen cupboard. I am presuming, Maria, that's so that we know you are always watching us in this kitchen. Oh, isn't that the sweetest thing? Very, very nice. <laughs> Would anyone like a little glass? Yes, why not? I only need 150 grams for this. It's getting busier and busier in this kitchen. What are you working on? I'm working on not losing my fingers. Excellent. As I get close to the <laughs> so it's ginger to go over, to sprinkle over the um, prawns Ooh. with a zesty lemon Ooh. and garlic and parsley sauce. You've come in. Why are you eating the cranberries like that? Right, well, that's the Christmas cranberry from Michael. Uh, would a glass of Riesling help? <laughs> Natty, you are the saviour of the terrine. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. We didn't have cream cheese. Oh, this is marvellous. Merci, merci. Yeah. I just wanted to show everyone what a delicious pie I am having with my glass of Riesling. This was made by Dave's wife. So huge thank you to Dave's wife. It's delicious. It's it is delicious. We're dipping in and trying the pâté. It's so good. We've made all of this duck liver pâté and usually it will be fine like that, ready to eat in two hours. But because we're not going to eat it until tomorrow night, I'm just going to cover it in melted butter and that will keep it perfect for tomorrow. So I've poured the butter on and that's it. That's going to go in the fridge be ready for tomorrow. The configuration in the kitchen has changed yet again. My uncle is working on random bits of delicious looking <laughs> ham. <laughs> What's it for? It's for the stuffing. Mm. You can chop it to very small pieces. Okay, that's getting better and better. It into there. Um, Marie and Lancelot are very busy. <laughs> like very, very busy. I can't imagine a line without Lancelot. I know. He's just fit in like instantly. And here I have just finished the cream cheese, chives, gelatine and lemon zest oh that are my first layer of What's the terrain. The olfactory senses are really exploding. <laughs> My uncle has injured himself. No, no, no. She's Come on, that is that dent. That's more clean, than a dent. A cleaver. And if you're wondering why he cut that much for so long, that is incredible. Yeah, and this is why I deal with the mush. There is the avocado layer for my terrine. Nice. Hmm? Mm. The cup. Very pleased with this. going to be great. I had this in the freezer just to set the bottom mm -hmm. layer. That was the cream cheese and chives. Now there's a layer of avocado and then there's going to be a layer of cream cheese with truffled smoked salmon in it. Oh, that is so good. Oh, how are the prawns going, Tatiana? Because goodness knows. And then you you're just finishing to, to clean them. Mm -hmm. I've got five left. Mm. Oh. This is the salmon mixture. I love making terrines. I haven't really done much cooking for ages and it's so nice to be back in the kitchen. It's very therapeutic, isn't it? It's quite a lengthy process, this one. But it's probably the most complex. The two most complex things I'm doing are the pâté and the terrine. Mm. So I started with those, but in fact, the Thermomix has made it so easy. I will just specify, I am not sponsored by Thermomix. <laughs> I'm just obsessed with it. <laughs> they definitely should, yeah. <laughs> Oh, gosh, we have a bit of spare smoked salmon. Oh, no, what, what are we going to do with that? Well, I know exactly what I will do with that. <laughs> I'll put that next to my lunch. <laughs> I'm going to wrap this up in cling film. By the way, I love your earrings. They're a gift from Philip's mother. Oh, they are wow. Beautiful, they? There is something very sinister about this. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Murder room. <laughs> And you've finished. That's the thing that really bewilders me. Oh, it's the mixing. Now it's... Yes. Okay. That's my next job. Mm. With eggs and Ooh. herbs and spices. I love Christmas. And, and cognac. <laughs> we nearly had a Christmas panic right now what? because it turns out that the tin cherries have pips in. Yes. But no, we don't need to worry because we have been sent by a very kind person some deep pipping things. Right, where are the deep pippers? The Machine, the in the door. I can't believe how soon this has come in handy after arriving. <laughs> okay, oh. well, we'll have a try. I can't believe it. We're oh. One cherry, Magic one pip. pip. <laughs> oh, by the way, how beautiful is this orange? It's gorgeous. We found it leaves. and chose it especially, apparently, for our cranberry Ooh. sauce. I have to show everyone what is going on here because this is too good. Hello. 
you're making a sausage roll wreath. Yes, which is obviously not something I've done before because I'm obviously not British. But uh, no, I'm sorry, I am British, but I've never had a sausage roll wreath in my life ever. I think it's a time. Always a time. I'm wondering where I've gone wrong my whole life. <laughs> Over here, I have finished the orange-flavoured cranberry sauce. And for Philip, I'm making the lemon-flavoured cranberry sauce. And then I'm going to run up and get changed because tonight we're going to be celebrating in the dining room. And I want to wear something a lot more Christmassy than a grey dress. Also, before I go back down, I have some emergency wrapping to do. I have changed into my favourite Christmas jumper which geniusly is not actually a Christmas jumper at all. It just looks like Christmas. It's actually an Australian jumper from the 1980s. See, massive sheep. And I think I've got kangaroos on my back. Yes, a singular kangaroo. And there's a flamingo on your left arm, which okay, I... Sorry. <laughs> Do you mean flamingo? Oh, <laughs> that's, yeah, that's what I meant. Somewhere between flamenco and flamingo on yes, my Yes, sorry. I mean, it could be a flamingo doing the flamenco, but there is and a koala be. on your other arm as well. Oh. I love this jumper and it only comes out at Christmas. We're not supposed to be opening this until Christmas Day. I just received two of the gifts for Christmas, one of them for Lancelot. I was about to wrap it, but he's showing a, he's showing a very keen <laughs> interest in his new bed. So maybe as we'll make our room nice and snug for Christmas, maybe you'll be allowed this one early. But before we open that, I'm going to tell everyone about the other one because Historic Mail have once again sent me a letter from Mummy and Percy. And I'm very lucky because Historic Mail has offered to sponsor this video with this ad. Mummy and Percy love history. They met over a shared bond in history. They're always watching historical documentaries and reading historical novels and discussing them with each other. And they loved receiving Historic Mail last year. So they're going to be very, very excited. For those of you who don't know Historic Mail, it's a super thoughtful gift for anyone who loves history or who just loves receiving a letter because it's so rare that we get proper letters these days. Every week, delivered to your doorstep, you receive the reproduction of a letter penned by a famous historical figure, along with a typed version of the letter, and a document providing the historical context around the letter itself, so that you have a more in-depth knowledge of what you're reading. So you can learn about the inner life of these famous historical figures that we've all heard of from the primary source itself, from their own words. I'm not going to make the same mistake I made last time. I'm not going to read bits of the letter out today, the one that I have for Mummy and Percy, because my mother is a menace and she watches the videos and then the surprise is spoiled. So instead I will show you the letter that she received earlier this year from Winston Churchill to his wife. What's great with this one is it's the little personal touches. That is apparently a galloping pug because Winston's wife called him a pug and he used to call her cat and they called their firstborn daughter the puppy kitten. There's a side to Winston that I've never seen. I think of him as this political giant and that's very much what comes across in his correspondence with Franklin D. Roosevelt. Roosevelt is telling Churchill his strategy. Australia must be held and as I telegraphed you we are willing to undertake that. Mummy and Percy absolutely loved it and if you're looking for the perfect gift for the history buff in your life then they have gift certificates available with your name and the receiver's name making it super personal. Their American History gift pack covers the period from 1776 and the founding of the Republic all the way through to 1976 when the Cold War was at its height. If you're still looking for Christmas presents and you want to give someone the gift of feeling part of history, then go to historicmail.com forward slash chateau for 10% off all of their products in their holiday sale. Now it is time to unveil the gift for Lancelot. Hey Lancelot, <laughs> do you want to have a little look at this? Do you want to try pulling on the ribbon with me, hey? It's more interesting than historic mail. <laughs> What is in here? What, what is this, hey? I can't believe you found a toilet room on, by the way. I know. Much. How perfect is it for this room? Look at this. He loves fake fur and he loves burrowing, so I think this is going to be absolutely perfect. He's very interested. This is Christmas present only. Look at it. Do you think we're going to get the same reaction from Percy as well? <laughs> <laughs> I've only managed to wrap one present, but it's too much fun in the kitchen today. I've just heard my aunt is about to decorate the Christmas cake. After a fortifying cup of chai, thank you very much, sir. Yeah. You've been working in the dining room for the big meal tonight. 
Are you using the new tablecloth? Yes, yes I am. Yes. Don't be surprised. Well, the only see the place I'm using. Yeah, definitely. I bought this at the MIU's ages ago. It was a massive set. Oh, I remember euros. it. It goes in the dishwasher. Everyone will be happy to hear. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> Quite a good one. But no. But it's got like 30 plates. I can't remember exactly. And all the Is different sizes. When do I never find such a bargain? It just depends on the day. Yeah, exactly. Well, we've seen fewer and fewer of the big plate yeah. sets, actually. I think it's also because we keep... Showing everyone that's <laughs> the place to play with a big plate set. Giving away a secret. <laughs> you could try it over the brown chargers. I know that you might not want to add brown, but it could work with the... It could work very nicely. Again, please, I think these plates are slightly smaller than our average mm -hmm. uh, dinner plates now. Yeah, should we see what you think? The chargers are slightly bigger than the average charger plates, so it might be. Yeah. And ages ago, I bought mistletoe cutlery, uh, which is a silver plate from Ercree. We've the... never used it because we didn't have any knives. And also, it's only a set of 12. Okay. There haven't been fewer than it's 12 all... for a yeah. few years. So. Oh, hang on. No, it's all happening over here. Well, here we are talking about plates and cutlery when actually Christmas is happening here. Is that apricot jam? It isn't. You don't have any. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm having to mm -hmm. dig in. So it's a black forest... <laughs> uh, Christmas cake now. Yeah, it's a First Nation issue. It's, it's wonderful <laughs> strawberry jam. This is a two-person job. Oh. The mince pies have landed, freshly warmed. Excellent. In fact, they're very hot, so don't grab one just yet. Natty, mince pies are Thank here. You. Oh, I love it. These beautiful white ones are so pretty on it. Actually, it really couldn't be better, could it, with the little deers there? Oh, that was Deer there. Okay, I better run back to the kitchen. I'm making a hot artichoke dip. Mm. I'm just Actually, throwing things in that well, thermomix. It's, it's so good. <laughs> what I was going to say is that this is something that my mother always does. She puts bubbles on the Christmas table. Yeah. I think it's a really clever way to, if you've got spare bubbles and you don't want to spend a whole lot of money on flowers or anything like that. Oh, yeah, that's it. You can do it like that because exactly. we've got no special florals for tonight. No. We will do for Christmas though. Yes. I would tell you all what's going on but I'm currently eating my mince pie. So I shall let pictures do the words. I need to dip to some holly. Hmm, okay, I'll go out and get you some. Our holly bush is just next to the moat and it's got lots of berries this year. So I should be able to find a really nice bit for my aunt. That's actually quite a lovely sprig for the cake, I think. I actually don't know how much my aunt wanted, but I figured that any spare can go to Philip for the table. I'm really happy, it looks all right. Actually, it's perfect, because you get to see that lovely yeah. border all around it. It ties in the, um, the brown. Yeah, love it. We're going to try to use the new Christmas rolling pin. It's more for biscuits, so I've no idea if it's going to work on icing. So we'll give it, I might mess up your icing completely, touching that. That's no, 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 go for it. Firm. Oh, yeah, 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 yes, yes. I don't know if you can see the little deer just here. They're so cute. So it's easier to see not on the camera. I am not a cake decorator, but I am having a great deal of fun. Who doesn't want gold on their Christmas cake? I love this. Michael's desperately coding. Natty is drawing the rectangles around the stars in the ceiling to place them. You're polishing the silver ready for tonight's dinner. Using toothpaste. Toothpaste, fabulous. Tatinette and I have just put the finishing touches on the cake using gold and silver. Should you touch that and Christmas is cancelled for you. Mm. Here. There are some sp spares. Mm. You're saved. We're wondering if this is normal. It was uh, grinding sugar. I think this might be icing sugar. I hope it's icing sugar. Hello. It is. It's not burning, is it? It just made granulated sugar into icing sugar. Wow. Well, we never need to buy icing sugar really? ever again. Yeah. We have full on... Uh, well, I mean, as long as you're happy to be breathing in icing sugar for the foreseeable future. It's very festive. Wow. It's like a Christmas mist. We, we could to buy more ice, uh, dry, dry ice. ice. Yeah. yeah. We also don't we need the them. smoke machine. Yeah. The moment we've been waiting for, this is going to fill the kitchen with a great smell. This is for the brandy butter, but I'm using cognac. I love that you're using the copper one. Of course. For the kitchen. We're doing this in style. Cool. 
and we need a lot of cognac in here. We've overestimated the quantity of brandy butter needed, but uh, never mind, at least it's done. What are we eating tonight? We are doing chicken thighs, mm -hmm. Thai style, because I quite like fancy that kind of flavour. Uh, yeah, it changes from all the really rich Christmassy things, it's fresher. Yeah. On my side, I've just finished the smoked mackerel pate that's got lemon juice, cream cheese, bit of goat's cheese in there too, lots of pepper. And I'm going to decant it in here. And obviously I have to keep tasting everything, just to check it's okay. Um, I have to. Was it good? Mm-hmm. What is it? Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, the de de mackerel. Mm -hmm. It's delicious. Really yes. Good. Well done. How's it going in the coding room? Currently doing six pointed stars in the constellation of Jesus and Mary. So hopefully those people will have their confirmations before dinner. So they'll have their certificate emailed to yes. them. Okay, fabulous. Wow. I have to pinch myself. Typical Christmas sight. <laughs> Fill up with glasses brought down from the attic, I'm guessing. From These the... are amongst my favourites in the, the entire house. Style. Yeah. What's not to love? You know, perfect for the table today. So you see, Judy, that's why you're not allowed in there yet. It's not finished yet. <laughs> A little bit longer because tonight is Judy's birthday and that's why we're doing such a big celebration, getting all the table ready. We're going to have a big party for her tonight. One of the most common sights in the chateau, Philip washing glasses in the Arrière Cuisine. This is it, my final recipe of the day, brandy cream. So we have brandy butter and brandy cream for the desserts. I've poured butter over the smoked mackerel pate. It looks disgusting now. Will look fine when it's set tomorrow. We have the artichoke dip ready for tomorrow too. The two cranberry sauces are done and the duck liver pate is in the fridge as is the salmon terrine. So I can just enjoy the rest of the evening now. I think it might be time for a little cocktail. Christmas cocktail? No. Oh, well, people are starting to settle in here looking beautiful. Oh, va va voom, Tatinette. I love that dress. Thank you. Oh, that is one of my favorites on you. Oh, tu belle. <laughs> As is the table. Not finished yet. Okay, sorry. I won't peek too soon then. Yeah, they needed those glasses. They pull everything together. Oh my goodness, I'm so happy to see these. Michael sent these as a gift. This is Michael T, not the Michael who's here. He sends us beautiful gifts that we open in Caddo at the Chateau and he sent them last Christmas. Christmas is truly here because the iced Christmas tree table napkins are out. I mean, they're not actually ice, obviously. We'd get a bit of a melting problem. Especially in this room, it is boiling. We are baking in here. I think we have to get changed soon. Yeah, yeah. bikini weather. I'm as happy as a child on Christmas. I made my wish and it came true. All I want for Christmas is you. It's the annual birthday shoot. Judy, you look stunning in that tiara. Amber's made it. The man who brought that beautiful chandelier next door, he handmade that tiara. I'll just show it to the world. It's just beautiful. And you look stunning. Thank you. This looks so beautiful. Here we go with the sauce. Marie, Hello. gorgeous. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. To the chefs, to the table makers, to the flower makers, yeah. to the candlestick makers, <laughs> and the makers. And maybe the birthday girls! Cheers! 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 Cheers. And, cheers. 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 and we have to show everyone the first outing of the cutlery. The beautiful mistletoe cutlery that Philip had collected a couple of years ago, but we didn't have the knives. And now he's paired it instead with his mother of pearl cutlery. And it's perfect for Christmas. We don't need the knives. Okay, is that it? We're ready. We're ready with the two bouche de Noël. That one goes. Always birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Judy. Happy birthday to you. Are 
your gifts from Tatinette and Stephen, and that's the traditional thing to have at Christmas in France. Yes. But for your birthday, we have one chocolate one and one fruit one. Well, I don't know what the rest of you are going to eat, but I don't know. <laughs>